Hey guys, and welcome to another video of my fish tank. And as you can see, if you've been following my other videos, this tank looks a little different because it is. Um, my last tank was a 57 Deep Blue Professional Rimless tank, and the reason why I hasn't, you know, have post videos lately is because uh, I broke it down, and most of the stuff here is pretty much brand new except for maybe some of the live rock that I took from my last tank and maybe about four pounds of the Fiji pink sand I used to seed this tank. The tank's been running about two weeks uh, and unfortunately I had to put the fish in here because my quarantine tank, my 20 gallon uh, quarantine tank, I had uh, a crash, well a mini crash coming in you know, I was checking the uh, readings with the ammonia and nitrate and nitrate, and that actually was crashing, so I had to remove the fish and put them in the main tank. I did use Dr. Tim's uh, nitrifying bacteria to help speed the process, uh, but it should be okay. I mean, I'll probably have a diatom bloom and everything else that comes with a new tank, but uh, with the existing sand and rock, it should one speed up the process and with the bacteria it should be okay so uh, fish are doing pretty good I'll go over you know what I have equipment wise in this video and also the uh, what I have you know livestock and, and everything else that's going on with this new tank so this is an Aquion 54 corner tank the wife wanted a nice kinda like a bow front type of tank and she fell in love with the corner tank so that's what we got it's a three gallon smaller. I, you know, I was contemplating going bigger to 90 or something like that, but uh, I just felt this tank was perfect. It's easier to maintain, and uh, I decided to, you know, have less fish. I think I'm pretty much maxed fish out, and maybe get a couple more of like the ground guys. But uh, swimming wise, I pretty much uh, max out. So let's go with the equipment. Uh, the equipment again, you know, with the tank, I bought the glass top to keep my fish in. And I, for lighting, I used this time around, I got the uh, Kessel 360 WE. And as you can see here, the way I rigged it up, it has the gooseneck with the adapter on there. Uh, I also hooked up the Apex uh, LSM, or the Lunar Simulation Module from the uh, system. So it actually uh, has the moonrise, moonset phase, the intensity, everything's automatic that's on the apex season table and the light the reason why I went with this is because it has a full spectrum light over one bulb like one condensed bulb it spreads very well it looks pretty cool and also it has UV and I believe UV is the bulb I need or the spectrum I needed to get better coloration in the coral and in the fish because just like humans uh, UV rays will make your skin turn tan and I think that's what's gonna happen in this tank so uh, also the shimmer because it's one bulb not many little bulbs like you'll get with the A-can lighting that I used or like a radion uh, you can see right now in this video the shimmer is it's just gorgeous uh, uh, my last tank I had an MP40 and it was just a single unit but this unit uh, this tank I have two MP10 WESs and right now it's hooked up to the purple mode or the tidal swell mode so it simulates the tide moving in and out of the tank so trying to get more natural in you know the, the tank and I want to have better success than I did my last tank um, we'll go over the livestock in a little bit just go over more of the equipment I have we're going to sump. The sump here is, as you can see here, it's not much room. And the only last equipment I'll probably put in here, because I'm going to go with SBS in this tank, uh, eventually is get a calcium reactor. And I'm still searching for one that will one fit and be good, too. The Tons Master Dock 9410, that's the same skimmer I had in my last tank. I kept that because it's such a great unit, it's a small footprint and it's rated for 265 gallons so as you can tell that's for a 54 that's pretty good uh, the return pump don't mind the salt creep 
is the Eheim Compact 2000. Uh, it's smaller and it's uh, perfect for uh, the f turnover rate, which is about 565 gallons an hour. Um, the sump, it doesn't have refugium in this, it just didn't have room in here. Plus, well, the uh, setup with the live rock, I really didn't need it. So, this is just a straight up sump with the overflow. And that I meant the uh, this the filter sock, uh, and it's E hop uh, or S hop RS or RL 75. I think it's RS 75 for resump 75 gallons. That's what it's rated up to. Uh, perfect size for this tank. I, you can see it fits perfectly inside the sump. It's a pain in the neck as you see when you get into this hobby. There's so many wires. <laughs> but I try to keep it as neat as possible. Uh, there's my LSM module, and then there's my uh, module for the Kessel. It's the VDM that I just got, so I can control the Kessel. And that's the reason, the reason why I went with the Kessel this time, because the new one you can control, so I can control the color and then the intensity, so I can have that sunrise and sunset and ramp up time and ramp up time down. Uh, with this unit, so uh, again, the Apex is just a, it's one of the best systems you could get out here to control your tank and make it work on overdrive without doing any much for it. So that's what I have in the uh, tank right now. Uh, again, like I said, I'm going to get uh, a calcium reactor eventually. I just got to make sure that it fits good and get the good one. So I'll still do research before I go into that. And I'm not getting any core on this tank. Well, I have a couple pieces, but that's about it. So let's go back to here for the livestock. Now, again, you know me, I like the rare species, or hard to get. And these are two bimaculus antheus, along with the below in the middle there, is a babonius antheus. The bimax are pretty cool fish. They're pink with the yellow on top. This is the dominant female on top, and it chases this guy around a little bit because it's changing. I expect it just to change to a male in about maybe about a month and it will get nice and red on top so it's going to be pretty cool to see this change especially um, you know seeing this first video and then see it down the road I went with uh, tank raised clowns again uh, and you might see three here unfortunately one of them is not doing well that's why I got the second black one this one in the middle is the ROA uh, black snowflake premium and this one up here is the newest design that's currently out there. It's called the Frostbite. And I thought he was pretty cool and a nice look to it. But this one here, actually, believe it or not, it's not a black snowflake, but a black phantom. And if you look at how he's breathing, that's never a good sign. Sorry about the angle because it's a bow front type of look. Uh, as you look at see the breathing here, it's been like that for about a week and a half, but he's getting a little scrawny. He's struggling, and unfortunately, I don't think he's going to make it. Just based on my experience with fish, um, I, it might be due to the ammonia poisoning that he got when the tank crashed for the quarantine, because that's where he was. And just a cool fish, but I don't know if he'll make it. They are hardy fish. They are very strong fish, so he's fighting a lot of... A lot of issues right now, and I do feel bad. Um, but the way the fish are, you know, these are one of the signs that the fish is either stressed really heavily or it's just not going to make it. Uh, again, it's a clownfish, so they're very, very strong as a uh, will wise. So hopefully, it does make it, but um, I've been keeping a close eye on him, and I just don't think the way he's been looking that he's going to make it. So it's just uh, the way sometimes it is. But the only thing you could do is give him the best care you can. Um, and maybe I'll take him to the uh, fish store to have them put him in the quarantine tank. And hopefully they could do something better than I could. Because I'm too afraid to set up my quarantine tank to have it crash again. Because I do check my uh, parameters all the time with the ammonia and stuff like that. Even though I had a big skimmer in there, it just crashed. So uh, didn't want to take that chance again. So my babonis over here. Very cool. As you can see, can't get away from that fish. Just a beautiful, beautiful antheus. 
and they do very well. And you see the beautiful colors. And you could get better lighting in this tank, and you just see the colors. This is a trachea plane right here, has red in it. It's very cool looking. Um, you see the feeder tentacles are out. In this uh, tank, I did a lot of like overhangs like I did my last tank, and I think just the way the tank is corner set up is pretty cool how I can lay it out. And the knuckle coral, this is actually from my last tank, the only coral that made it from my last tank, other than some of the sponge, the blue sponge that I got. Um, cool guy, moves around like usual, and uh, he's doing very healthy as you can see. Now I'm trying to find, and hopefully I could find, is one of the rare blennies. You probably don't see it often, you could Google it. It's called a tiger blenny. And a tiger blenny, it's small little comb tooth blenny. And right now, while I'm looking for him, he was out in the open. And he blends in a little bit with the rock. So I'm, you might not see him in this video because I haven't been paying attention where his whereabouts is. But he's uh, a cool little guy. And oh, there he is. I found him. See if hopefully I could get a good look at him from this angle. Don't mind the. It's hard to get the thing, but you can see here. If you go Google him, one, you can't even find a price on him because that's how rare he is from. Uh, and he's from Australia. So I'm going to actually flip the camera back over and so I can get a good picture of him. But uh, cool little guy. Um, and just super rare, nice colors on him. If you Google it, you'll, you'll see the pictures of him, but you can't get a price on him. That's how rare it is. And if you, a person like me who likes looking at live aquaria, um, you can find them on that either. So that's how rare it comes up into the marketplace. So that's pretty much all my fish that I have in here. Um, I'll probably get a ruby red dragonette and another Hawaiian dwarf moray eel in this tank, but that's pretty much it. Maybe one more swimmer. Uh, but, you know, that's the livestock I'm going to have here because uh, I'm going to try to go with more of SPS and you have to have cleaner water. Uh, so, I want to go that route with this tank, mix it with some LPS as well, and hopefully have some success with it. But the calcium reactor is definitely a, a unit that I want to get in here, a piece of equipment that I think is vital to having a very long-term success with an SPS tank. And uh, anybody who has an SPS tank thriving has a calcium reactor in their tank. And eventually I'll get a clam too, but it's too early to get that in this tank again. It was an emergency uh, transfer of the fish that was in my QT tank because it was crashing. So, um, but the fish are doing good, except for that one, unfortunately, one clam. So guys, uh, keep your eyes heads up for more videos to come, and and uh, you'll see this tank beautifully, uh, hopefully, you know, become a beautiful tank with the coral uh, as I fill it out eventually. As you well know, it's a very expensive hobby when it comes to coral and fish, especially the fish I like. They're they're the harder ones to get, and they're they usually have a higher price tag. All right, guys, uh, happy reefing, and we'll see you guys in the next video.